They did what they could with what they had. And this work is about seeing that, letting go of the past, as Oprah says, forgiving is letting go that the past could have been any different. Our parents were our parents living in the time. So And so this work is seeing them for what they went through and the time in which they lived and now seeing our own struggles in our own time and doing better because again as i coach we need to step into the legacy we've inherited so much beauty look at us all colorful look at the artwork behind us we are a people that have inherited a heritage and a rich legacy strength um, and if we do not heal the pain and the trauma it clouds our ability to step into the greatness that we need to pass on because we stand on the shoulders of, you know, strong ancestors and we need to carry on what serves the generations before, you know, that come after us and heal that which we've carried from those who came before us. Yes, yes. Hmm. And you thought of something, I'm going to let you, I'm going to stop, I'm going to shut my mouth because I want you to school us. But a, a big deal I keep thinking about this is acknowledging that you have work to do. You know, um, I thought about this as we sit here and we speak to each other. There's a campaign, at least in the States, where people say things like, oh, she has daddy issues, or, you know, he has mommy issues. And it's, it's weaponized, I almost feel like it. It is. And so when you hear that, when you hear someone accuse women in general, let's say, mm -hmm. of having daddy issues, the women become defensive. Mm. It's almost by you saying it in that way, it's weaponized and it's almost like you have a problem, it's something wrong with you. And so we may very well, I may very well have some daddy issues, okay, <laughs> that I need to resolve. But because you have weaponized that phrase, I have now become resistant to acknowledging that that might be a problem and that I might need to do work. Yeah. yeah. Pain, hurt, wounds from our childhood, when they are weaponized, they sink mm -hmm. and they become shame that we carry. And that's why for so many of us, this is shame. Apart from telling men and women they have daddy and mama issues, let's pile on some religion on top of it. She's your mother. She gave birth to you. She's next to God. Your parents are next to God. How dare you? after everything she, they did for you, how dare you? This is why for so many people, everything sinks to the shame level. And when it is shame, shame festers in the dark. And this work is about saying, show me one person who does not have trauma. I want to meet that one person. I've met women who've come to my class and say, I don't know, I have no mother wound. I do not have mother hunger, but I know one plus one in my life is not two. And I want to find out what happened. And they dig back. So being very open, first of all, to seeing every human being on a journey and having, having work to do because our earliest childhood environments have informed everything about us. And con constantly looking back and evaluating where I have come from, the messages that I have received, the narratives and the patterns that I inherited, which become my blueprint. And always investigating, why am I like this? What, I was very loud, extra, extrovert, extra, because I needed to affirm my presence in the world. I needed to be seen because for so long I had needed to shrink back and be small so that I can be loved. So when I grew older, I, I was over the top extra. Now seeing that, 
I know I do not have to be the loudest voice. I'm loud and bubbly by nature, but I don't have to be the loudest voice. Knowing that I'm worthy and enough as I am um, is really important. So I, I hope this allows people to understand and embrace compassion. For our parents, one, this is not a conversation about going to confront your parents, but it's also not a conversation of confronting um, those of us who are struggling and are already doing the work and um, understanding that those who are already doing the work are many steps ahead because everybody has work to do. There is work to do because that makes us better human beings. So, yeah, I like that, that shame. Um, gets weaponized, your pain, your hurt gets weaponized. And when it does that, it sinks to the, to the you know, shame level. But when our experiences as human beings are spoken out in a dignified way in safe spaces, shame cannot exist. Shame, um, our pain and hurt spoken out, you know, drive away shame because shame only thrives in secrecy. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we how do we start once we have acknowledged that we got the work to do? <laughs> yeah, so so I think there's two things. And um would you show that the, the the chart? Um I like this chart and we'll give credit to the the researcher. It's a chart that um I have used um about the intergenerational transgenerational transmission of trauma here. Yeah, so for those who will watch this or see clips of it. So, and this applies, and again, I'm very familiar with um, my people, people who look like me, and it's very similar to slavery in Africa is colonialism, but I know that this is the same for Asian women, for, you know, Caucasian women, for Latino women. So I think if we look at this, we can see how, um, this applies. So, so when we think about slavery, um, colonialism, and um, the factors, the big those are the big traumas that tore our communities. So when we think about our parents, so oppression, you know, as a nation, you know, the political um, policies. You know, I know in Kenya a lot of families were sent into concentration camps. It's the same thing as the segregation laws, the Jim Crow laws. Um, so the segregation and denial of rights for so many people. When we distill that at community level, we see the services that are available at community level in those segregated areas, if you're sent to a concentration camp or poor areas, the community is really torn. So enter drugs, enter mental health um, challenges, enter poverty, um, illnesses um, because you don't have access to great food so at the community level but truly where this um, where we start interrogating is at the family level I know it is very similar I live in South Africa now um, um, and I see so much similarity having lived in the US and now living in South Africa men were taken away from their families into the mining communities like men in the U.S. had to go and work and women were left to fend and care for children. It is calculated to, to strip men from communities and they only returned home once a year. And so this woman is left with all these children to fend um, and take care of and she's young and remember our parents are young they're not even adults they're children so at the family level the breakdown then begins so you have children you have eight children very meager resources you need to feed them there is competition so one of the things that i see amongst women which is again when we look at the community our education system reinforced competition so you see why the, we say women are each other's worst enemies because we were told there is not enough for everybody. So you've got to fight and claw your way. So this competition, sibling, you know, siblings are fighting for resources and attention from this one woman who too is a child. And so at the family level, you know, at the family level, this the systematic destruction of the family 
is what has, you know, is truly very calculated um, when we think about um, colonialism and slavery, um, how, you know, the, the, our, our families were decimated. Um, and then now at the individual level, you know, you see um, issues such as low self-esteem, um, you know, difficulty in parenting because who taught me how to be a parent? Um, there's forced separation from parents. A lot of our parents were taken away, bring in abandonment issues, um, our identity. Um, you know, we are struggling with our identity because our hair was not good enough. Our skin was too black. The suppression of culture, you know, our culture was demonized and we needed to take on the culture of the other. There was a lot of physical and sexual abuse, a lot of violence also in the home, because again, there was a lot of aggression. And when you're dealing with an aggressor, um, that aggression has got to be projected on the family. Um, and so then as individuals, this is where we are. And you can, you can stop sharing now. Um, and so when you look at all those issues, um, at alcoholism, as at abuse, domestic violence, you know, a man is torn away from his family. He is humiliated for nine months of the time that he's working, paid almost nothing. He comes home. I mean, Crystal, you have one child, I have two children. Most, most of our parents had multiple children, groups of children. Those kids are so needy. You are a child yourself. You are so frustrated. You know, you're fighting for your life. At any minute, your life could be taken away. Violence, alcoholism, um, you're not present for your children. With our adult brains, we can see all that. Unfortunately, the template is formed as a child. And the hunger of you as a child lives within you, the adult, until you deal with it. Because as a child, you don't see your father frustrated. You see a father who doesn't love you, who doesn't have time for you, a mother who is always whipping you. Now as an adult, mentally, you reason that the child, the child within you still needs a healing and that's the inner work, it's going internally because that um, dysfunctionality, that confusion within you is actually what manifests in adulthood and that's a character and that's a personality that we see the clinginess i was clingy as hell because i was abandoned and i was to cling onto this men who are not good for me and so it keeps playing out until you heal yourself and healing doing the inner work is actually going internally and asking myself how did i get here what happened to me or what did not happen that i needed that's playing out in my life as an adult, what happened as a child.